Hi, hello, vanakkam and welcome to yet another episode on Little Slaw YouTube channel. Please do subscribe to our channel if you have not subscribed yet. Like, share the video and comment if you have any questions or feedback in the comment section. With no further ado, let's go to the video. So we have a scenario 1 where the client has to send the title of the book to the server and the server has to respond to the client with the author of the book and the publication date of the book. And the other thing which is here is the data has to be faster and readable. So now we have another scenario and let's see what is the thing that we are dealing in the scenario 2. And in scenario 2, the client has the location of a particular place and he wants to know the current temperature and the forecast of the location and this data has to be verbose and again it has to be readable it has to be structured which matches the data so let's now see how and what are we going to use to deal with this issue so in both the scenarios we want the data to be faster less verbose readable structured and the object alignment so what was used at these kind of scenarios is we had used XML to handle these situations but are they effective and are they useful no so we had brought JSON into the picture and we will see what XML does and how does it help and what are why are the reasons we move to JSON so as I men mentioned XML was the most widely used data interchange format for transmitting data between servers and clients as well as between different systems. But XML has been in use for much longer than JSON and was designed to be a more flexible and sophisticated format for representing complex data structures. However, XML can be verbose, it is difficult to read especially for simple data structures which made it slow and par slow to parse and transmit and this led to the development of JSON as a more lightweight and efficient alternative for use in web applications where fast and efficient data exchange is critical. Despite the popularity of JSON, XML is still widely used in many applications and industries particularly in the areas of document exchange, web services and data storage where its expressive capabilities are more valuable. So let's now see what or how did JSON did overcome these issues and became very popular. So here we can see JSON is a more compact and easier so JSON is on the right side of the screen and the XML is on the left side of the screen so here we can see as I mentioned so JSON is generally more compact and easier to read than XML especially for simple data structures and additionally JSON uses fewer characters to represent data compared to XML which makes it faster to transmit and easier to parse However, on the left side, we can see the XML which provides more expressive capabilities such as the ability to specify data types, it specifies the attributes that makes it more suitable for certain use cases such as representing complex data structures or storing data in a persistent format. So, in the start of the video, we saw an example where the client sends the title of the book and the server will have to send the author and the publication date of the book. So let's come back to the same example. So in this example, and this is a JSON format where we can see the data is an array of objects where each object represents a book and each object has three attributes, which are the title, the author and the publication date, which holds the corresponding values for each book. And this JSON data could be sent from a server to a client, such as a web browser or a mobile browser, where it can be easily passed and used to dynamically display the information about the books on a, of a page. And let's now see the example 2 with the temperature, the forecast thing. So in this example, the data is an object with three properties, the location, the current temperature and forecast. 
The location property holds the city and state information as a string, while the current temperature holds the current temperature in degrees Fahrenheit as a number. The forecast property holds a string with a text description of the forecast. So a client such as a mobile app or browser can send a request to the server to retrieve this data which can then be easily passed and used to display the current weather information in the app. And JSON provides a simple and efficient way to transmit this information between the server and the client. So let's see the advantages of the JSON. So we'll have a few examples. So the first advantage of having or using JSON is its lightweight. So for example, considering the following JSON, which represents the name of a person, which has the age and the city of a person. This data structure can be transmitted and passed quickly and efficiently, making it deal for use in web applications. And now let's move to the second advantage. The second advantage is the readability. The readable syntax of JSON makes it easy to understand and work with data. For example, considering the following JSON representation of a simple data structure. And this data structure is easy to understand and work with even for developers who are new to the data format. And the third advantage is it is easy to parse. So JSON can be easily parsed and processed by a wide range of programming language and platforms, making it a versatile and flexible data interchange format. For example, the following code in JavaScript demonstrates how to parse a JSON data structure. And this code demonstrates how easy it is to parse a JSON data structure in JavaScript. And there are a few examples of advantages of JSON. Let's see the other advantages now and the fourth advantage which makes JSON more appealing for complex data structure is it supports more data types which is basically a wide range of data types than any other data interchange formats including numbers strings arrays and objects and this makes it more suitable for representing complex data structures and the fifth advantage of using JSON is it has a smaller learning curve in comparing to the other XML. So for, for many developers, JSON is easier to learn and use compared to the other data interchange formats. The simpler syntax and structure of JSON makes it quicker to get started with and more straightforward to work with. So, so far we saw about the differences between XML JSON and how does the JSON work and what are the advantages and how does it work. So let's now see what is JSON. So JSON, the JavaScript object notation, is a lightweight data interchange format that is easy for humans to read and write. Not only for humans but also for machines to parse and generate. So JSON is a text format that is completely language independent but uses conventions that are familiar to the programmers of the C family of languages including C, C++, C Sharp, Java, JavaScript, Perl, Python and many others. And JSON is widely used as a data format for exchanging data between a server and web application serving as an alternative to XML. JSON is used because it is lightweight and easy to read allowing for faster parsing times. JSON data is often used in AJAX-based applications as well as in APIs which allow applications to communicate with each other. In short, JSON provides a simple, efficient and flexible way to store and exchange data between different systems and programming languages. So before we close the video, we will see about we'll have a touch base on the other aspects of JSON. So the first one is the JSON schema, which is a specification for defining the structure and data types of JSON data. And JSON schema can be used to validate JSON data to ensure that it conforms to a specific format. And the second aspect of JSON is the JSON web token, which typically consists of three parts, a header, a payload and a signature and the header and payload are both encoded as JSON and then concatenated separated by a period and this JSON web token are a compact URL safe means of rep 
representing claims to be transferred between two parties and this java or the json web token is commonly used in authorization and authentication scenarios where it can be used to encode and transmit information such as user identities and permissions and then the next aspect is json with padding where json with padding is a technique for making cross domain requests to a server by wrapping json data in a script tag and this json with padding allows us to bypass the same origin policy and make requests to a server from a different domain and then finally we have the json in databases where many modern databases support the storage and retrieval of json data which can be used to store structured data in a flexible and efficient manner so so far i think i have covered most of the areas of json in case if you have any doubts or queries please do comment in the comment section like share the video and please don't forget to subscribe to our little sla youtube channel so until i meet you in another interesting video it's bye bye from asan shanmugam and little sla